What's up and welcome. Hello. Today I'm working on procedural audio. Um, as you can hear, I got some sounds in the background going beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I'm actually really proud of this. This is, represents a lot of work from this entire morning. Hours and hours and hours of getting uh, FMOD Studio set up so it can play FMOD Studio events which are really freaking flexible. You can set up all these parameters. Like, for example, if your player has low health, you can make um, your song do completely different things. Or if you just simply go into a different room, you can change the music, but all of it's still kind of the same song. It's pretty neat stuff. So um, this is the beginning of creating adaptive audio in the game. And an adaptive audio is just something where it just the, the music adapts to how you play. So for example, you go into this room, there's some enemies, and the music gets a little more intense or something. Um, I'm going to try and do that in a unique way for Songbringer and actually do procedural audio. So I'm actually experimenting today to see if I can create procedural melodies. <laughs> Botfo, thank you so much. I just won 245 points. Oh, it's so nice of you, Botfu. Honoring. Honoring me. Ah, oh, it's great. So, but anyways, let me just rip through uh, some of these basics here. For anybody watching this on YouTube, uh, this was this was kind of a lot of little things to get straight. So, I want to I want to show you how you would set up FMOD Studio yourself. Uh, first of all, you got to go download FMOD Studio from or FMOD Studio and FMOD low level from um, from FMOD's website, and then you basically get this FMOD Studio thing set up. And um, I'll get into this next, but you also have to have your FMOD low level all set up. Let me show you what's going on with FMOD low level to get your, to load all your banks and stuff like that. Um, if you're familiar with FMOD at all, low level getting it set up for, this is basically the API for using FMOD in a game. And uh, this is, you know, one of the most important things. You have to create this FMOD studio. Then you need to get your low level access. You know, I just do that to see what the sample rate is. Uh, you need to initialize, create some channel groups. This is for playing sounds and stuff like that. But here's the important part for what I was working on this morning is where you got to load your banks. So basically, uh, when you're in FMOD Studio and you're creating your song and everything like that, you have to set up banks. And then you, um, when you're when you got your song all ready to go, you go build, and that exports the bank. And then when you're in your code for your game, you load up the bank. So here's where it loads the master bank. Here's where it loads the master bank strings so that you can refer to events by their string values rather than just their guids. So anyways, once you've got all that set up, there's a couple more critical things. First of all, you got to go start the event. And this is how you would start an event. First of all, you have to go get it. You get the event. And you want to create an instance of the event. And then you start it. It all seems simple, but when you don't know what you're doing, and it's the first time doing it, it takes a minute. And then most critically, you've got to go run the update command. So every time you're doing your game's tick, I do this for my music system's tick, you got to go FMOD Studio update. Or else you'll have silence. Pure silence. And another critical thing that I was missing for a while, I didn't know that I had to have my events as part of banks. So I, I set up this event, I'm like, it's working! It's playing the song! Why is it not working in the game? But I had to just go assign to bank. So let me show you what this is here, all set up in... Um, well, let's go to the Ableton project first. This is what the Ableton project is. It's just a little test audio. Um, basically, I've got a, a pure sine wave here in this track and a bunch of beep boop bop boops randomly changing right here. So, save. So yeah, this is just one single note repeated three times. This is like a point, like 16 notes repeated. Uh, so anyways, I just exported these two tracks separately. This is one wave, this is another wave, right? Okay, so once you've got that, this is my little test project, right? Once I've got all that exported, then I can you can throw it in FMOD and start playing around with how it would procedurally change, how you'd add parameters and things like that so that your game can change this audio as you go. So um, you got to set up your tempo. I've got the tempo synced up. And then, oh, this is kind of critical too. you got to go um, your time versus beats. I don't know why it defaults to time, but yeah, you really want to set this to beats. And then, um, yeah, you can set up a looping, looping region first of all. So I did this. You go right here add loop region and that's what this little blue thing is 
So basically, when it starts this event off, when you kick this all off, you go, F mod, play this event. It starts. And then it gets into this loop region and just starts looping over and over and over. Loopity doop. Loopity. Let's keep looping and looping and looping until you do something else. Until some parameter changes what it would do. So, anyways, I've just got this as a very, very basic setup right here. What's up, salad dogs? Yo! Yeah, I know this is so exciting. I've been explaining this all, so I'm not gonna go back and explain it all again, but if you missed any of it, it's on it'll be on YouTube. Um, so the last uh, the last little bit of getting this project set up was to add this index vari variable right here. So the way Songbringer's audio works so far is that it's got like several different indexes of audio. So as you go and you you're playing the game and you switch to a different room, that's a different index. So it starts off at index zero. And then you walk into the next room, and that would be index one. Um, and then you go, say, back to your first room. That goes back to zero because you're already in that room. But if you go to the next room, that would be index two. So that's just kind of how Songbringer works, right? And this is where it gets into how your game in particular would use FMOD. Um, so yeah, I've got one single simple parameter called index, right? And then so. Basically, I'm making it so I've got these two tracks. This is the bass going do, and this is the the little random loopity, go, the little random triangle wave going beep boop ba boop boop doo, beep boop boop. So, anyways, um, once you've got your index created, you would to create an index or I mean a parameter. You just go to this plus thing and you can add a parameter. So what I did is I added added this index parameter, and I'm adding some automation based on the index parameter for just the audio too, which is the beep boop bop boops. Um, actually, this could be pretty clear if I just made this the uh, the uh, bass, and this is the uh, triangle wave. So, um, yeah, see, this is the automation. If, uh, if the index value is at zero, then the triangle wave will be completely silent. If the index value is one or above, then it will start playing this triangle value. So that's what I did all this morning to get all this set up so that I could just test the very, very basics of FMOD. So my next goals today are to um, make to start actually experimenting with actually procedurally generated melodies. So right now it's just a random bunch of beep boop boops and bop boops. I want to see if I can actually create some random variables that are parameters and um, and pass them into FMOD and use them as basically random seeds so that it would create its own melody based on those random numbers and it would create the exact same melody every time I give it the same random numbers. So Songbringer can, um, you know, it has its own random number system and everything like that that's based on the world seed so it can give FMOD those parameters, there's some random number parameters, and it will always generate the same event each time. I'm on, I don't know if this is possible. I'm gonna try it out, just hack through this, see if it works. <laughs> yes, good call. Good call, salad dongs. Beep boop. Bop. Beep boop bop. There we go, okay. So yeah, we got some beep boop bop boops. All right, the first thing I wanna do here is change the index value to have its default value back at zero. So let's go here, drag this to there, and then set its initial value. So it always starts at zero. Uh, excuse me. Uh, those are samples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, Azenris? Yeah, those are samples. So I started a really, really simple project in Ableton. So yeah, this is the this is how it all flows. I've got two tracks in Ableton. This is the boo. Right. This is the beep boop bop boop. Yeah, as you can see, they both have their max vol volume or the max volume the whole time, right? I'm just exporting this track all clean and then throwing it into FMOD to do all the volume automation and all the mixing and stuff. So FMOD is pretty freaking powerful. I'm so excited about this and I really think I can do procedurally generated melodies and it shouldn't be too hard actually. So, yeah, okay, so we got an initial value. Let's go export the bank. 
and see if that works. So basically, if it did work, then I'll have just the sign, the pure bass going. Yeah, this is really cool. I'm so excited. Very good. All right, cool. See that? All we have is the bass. So I want to make it now where it changes the index value as I go into the next room and it will add in the beep boop bop boops. So I want to do one more little thing to the beep boop bop boops. I want them to be at 50% volume, which is negative 6 dB um, when they're at index 1. And then when we get to index 2, that's when they'll be 0. Let's uh, re-export that. I'm still getting used to all this. I think there's a way I can probably automatically update. It might be this live update thing. No. Well, maybe. I don't know. I'm still getting used to this. I'm not exactly sure how the assets will work, too. I think right now I just got them thrown straight in my assets folder. I think there's probably a smarter way to do that. But anyways, the next thing I want to do is to set the parameter. I want to basically send fmod the parameter value of the index for the room. Yeah, my, my indexes will be integers in the game, um, but I'll, I, it, but um, fmod requires them to be floating point values, but it won't matter um, because I'll make, I'll make this fmod project, um, if I want to, I can have it fade between them. So basically, they'll be index, they're integers in the game, floating point values in fmod, but I'll handle it somehow. Is it is your volume too loud, Asmus? Sorry if I'm blaring out anybody's audio here. Okay, so I already created a, a function, or I mean, a, yeah, I did. I created a, a function decoration for set parameter value, so I wouldn't have to recompile everything while I was streaming, which takes forever. The audio seems fine. Good, good, good. All right. Okay, so yeah, I've got these two functions created. Set parameter value, get parameter value. And I think I think I'm going to have to create a a, a map of um, event instances. So let's go, I'll create a map. So it's going to be a map of strings to fmod, what are these called? fmod studio event instance. I probably want, I probably want an event descriptions as well. Then I won't have to call get event every time and I can just process all the events at first. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to do both of these as maps. The Mountain Dungeon and Hyperlight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's, that's what you would call adaptive audio, which means that basically as you move into different rooms, and Hyperlight Drifter does that amazingly. Um, as you move into different rooms, it changes the audio, right? But this is hopefully, um, I hope, my hope for Songbringer is that this will actually be procedurally generated audio, which means that it will change the melody. It will actually, yeah, that's all I mean. All I wanted to do is just change the melody based on your world seed. So your world seed, when you create a game in Songbringer, will determine how the music turns out. Wissa so yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Procedural audio, F mod. Um, I just spent a, a like a good ten minutes explaining how all this is set up. So if you want to go back and check out this YouTube video later, um, this will kind of all this will all be explained. So I basically, but the basics of it are: I've got an Ableton project with two tracks. I exported them separately, and then I threw them in F mod, and then now I'm coding it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. So today is an experiment to see if it's possible to do 
procedurally generated melodies. And I've got an idea how it, how it could work, and I think that FMOD is powerful enough to do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you probably did. You probably are the person that got me using FMOD. I remember somebody did. It was probably you. Yeah. And I started using it because, um, because it's actually way better than a lot of the other sound libraries out there just for playing sound effects. But I've always had this in the back of my mind. I'm like, dude, I've got to go and make this so I'm using FMOD to its full potential because it's freaking dope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's possible. I'm pretty sure it is possible. So if it's possible, I'm going to find a way. So we got FMOD. These are going to be FMOD events. And then these are going to be FMOD instances here. I'm just keeping a map of these because they don't, I don't think they really change. And I want to, I want to be able to reuse instances and events basically. Thanks, Mr. So. Thank you. Thank you. I just, the reason why I'm doing this too, is that I, I get tired of game audio, game music really fast. Even adaptive audio. Adaptive audio is sick. It's dope. It's great when your game reacts to the player when you move to a different area or when there's more enemies or when you have low health or whatever. That's that's great. That's dope. It's a great step in the right direction. But I just I I I, I hate and love game music. It sucks because I, I'll love game music at first. I'm like, like for example, Axiom Verge. Great game. Great music. Actually, it's such great music, I could even almost buy the track of music. But when you play a game for 16 hours or something, trying to get 100% of all its stuff, you end up, for at least for me, I end up hating the music. And I go and I turn it off. I'm like, I can't listen to the music anymore because I've heard this track over and over and over so much. I just, I don't like repetition. So I want to be able to, if I want to be able to create procedurally generated audio where it just changes the melody a little bit. Yeah, for Overwatch music. Might be a good idea to have the project and audio system build themes that it builds upon, modifies, create variations of. Yes, yeah, Salad Dong. So um, to get it to get it that the way that I will do themes is based on keys. So um, one of the random numbers that Songbringer will send to FMOD basically will be the music key. So, for example, if you're if it's decided that this theme right now should be in the key of C, then it will always be playing notes in the key of C. And that'll just be one of the random numbers. It's just a random number between like one and seven. <clears throat> yeah, so that's a pretty simple way to do themes. Or at least to start out themes. There's probably a better way to do themes, you know, like super advanced, you know. But I'll get there. I want to start simple at first and just be like, okay, is it possible to create a, just a simple procedural melody? Yeah, yeah. All right, so here's where I'm gonna I'm gonna load all the events right when right when I load the master bank and the strings bank. I'm gonna load all the events and put them into the map so that I can reuse them quickly without having to ever look them up again. I think I can do that. Yeah, okay, we can get the path. Get parameter counts, get parameters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is this function here can grab all of the events.
<laughs> audio stuff. As brain. Audio stuff. <laughs> uh, cool. Alright, we got event count zero, event desks, and then we're gonna go. Um, grabbing from the master bank, we're grabbing all the events and checking. We want to make sure that it has event count greater than zero. We almost got Facebook integration. Oh man, I've done that before. I totally know what you mean. It's such a pain. I know, right? It's tough. Especially all that stuff. You have to go create your app and then you got to like create some freaking URL interface so it loads right and all that. Oh man, I know what you mean. That's not easy. We don't really need to fail this whole thing just if the event counts later less than zero. I'm just going to loop over the events now. Okay, so this is loading all the events. Store all the events. Right, yeah. I know, right? Gosh. Sometimes this, the hoops they make you jump through is like super unnecessary. All right, so we're going to push back to FMOD events. Oh wait, first we want to get the string value for each event. So this is gonna be the string path key or whatever. I know, right? I know, they have like custom documentation for Unity and all that. Oh, I gotta remember not to save my file because it indexes every time and it takes forever when I'm streaming to index. <laughs> good example all right so fmod um, let's go event desks I I think is it get path is that what it's called Yeah. Okay. So let's make um, a path variable we can just throw everything into. I guess we can just do it like that. So we'll grab the path, grab, say, the path size and how big it retrieved the path size. Oh, that's just path. And then we also want to check if this failed.
So if we've got the path and loaded and everything, then we just want to store it. Fmod events, path. equals this event. And we'll also check if um, if the pa if the string length of path is less than or equal to zero and we just continue. We should do a little assertion here just to check this. All right, there we go. All right, if this, if this all works, then we'll have uh, a map of fmod events and their path names. Let's just step through this to make sure it all works. Oh, I just noticed one little thing could be better. Should start at zero or no, no zero. All right, so we step it through. What do we got? Event count one. Very good. We only have one event. We just want to know what it's called, have a path to it. Next time that'll be zero, so that I won't have a default random string like that. Jalapenos, bud. What's up, man? I got a little video for you. I need like a quick link for this. You're enjoying the silent night? It's a silent night, huh? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing super great. I'm making procedural audio today. So excited. There you go. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the path would start at zero. We check and get the path. All right, it got something. Yes, and it got the right path. Very cool. So, we've loaded in the, all the events. And it looks like we're going to be able to get the path for the events. And we're stashing it back to the fmod events map. So let's do that one more time to make sure the path starts at zero. How do you tolerate Xcode after all this time? The amount of bugs I run into with Apple is super frustrating. There's a lot of bugs. It's not that great. But it's so funny because I have the I have the opposite situation. I'm running into some crazy ass bugs with Visual Studio right now that are so bad. Like it just said, un, an unknown error has occurred, and then Visual Studio I can't even click anything. It won't even it won't even let me exit. I tried clicking exit Visual Studio, and it's like an unknown error has occurred. Exit Visual Studio. An unknown error has occurred. I'm like fuck. So I went and reinstalled or repaired. I repaired the entire installation. It took like an hour to repair all of Visual Studio. And then I loaded again. It says an exception has occurred and the same exact thing. So, and then this morning I went back into it, tried it again. In Visual Studio, I can't even click on anything. Like I'm literally just clicking on anything. I'm trying to click the X button to close Visual Studio. I'm trying to click the file menu. Everything doesn't work in Visual Studio anymore. I think I basically just have to re I have to uninstall Visual Studio and reinstall it all. 
And it just happens to me a lot with Microsoft products. So I don't know. I have the exact opposite feeling. <clears throat> yeah. How does that work, procedural audio, jalapenos, bud? Um, I was explaining a lot of how it works this at the beginning of this stream. So if you want to watch this video on YouTube later when I upload it, it'll all ex I explain a lot of how it will work. And then to actually get into how it will work to make procedurally generated melodies, I'm going to be doing that during today's stream. No, I'm, I'm definitely sure there's no pop-up window. Yeah. Yeah, not face. Yeah, I believe you. I totally do. I thought that repairing it would work, which has happened before. You know, I'm like, okay, I'll just repair the installation and it worked. But this time, it's just it's just totally fucked. And like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything to Visual Studio to change it. It just broke on its own. But you know what? Thankfully, at least it wor still works from the command line. So when I do my triple platform builds for Songbringer each week, I you know I upload to Steam and all that, the beta version. Um, I just have a little script that runs. Uh, every time I load Linux, it rebuilds Songbringer. Every time I load Windows, it rebuilds Songbringer. I do that from the command line on Windows. And at least that works. So there's nothing wrong with MS Build. There's nothing wrong with this compiler. It's just the actual IDE uh, Visual Studio is just totally borked right now. Yeah, it's 2015. Yeah. Oh no, now you got odd crashes? Oh no, salad dogs. Ah. Uh, it's, it's very fun to deal with, right? All right, cool. We got events. We got events, and when they're all loaded into into maps, all neat and nice and stuff. There we go. Okay, so now all, we got all these events stored. So when we want to start an event, we no longer need to look it up or get it. We can just get it from our map. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get the event from the map. based on the name. And if the event is null, then we're gonna assert and return. All right, jalapenos. Favorite issue of the week? In-app purchasing not working? Oh, because you hadn't agreed to the current financial agreements, right? Oh, the pains. Oh, this is so, I know exactly what you're going through, man. I went through all this with Hero Bash, and dude, oh, the worst part, the worst part was I was submitting my app to Apple. They rejected our app for like two months. It was so horrible, and the freaking feedback they gave us was like, sorry. You know, that's it. It's just like, sorry. Yeah, we can't put your app on the App Store. Look, like, why? Why can't you do it? And then they would reply back a week later, oh, check out this list of stuff you should do. Like, they didn't even give us any concrete information on why Hero Bash failed. Oh, my God. It was such a freaking hellish approval process but then finally I figured out that they were they didn't want us to use people's they didn't want us to save people's um, game center user handles I'm like okay fine we just won't save people's game center user handles and it took two months to get through that it was so horrible but they might be better now that was in 2013 so that's this might be old information. But man, I I know what you're going through, dude. Oh. It can be hellish sometimes. Alright, so now we should have the event.
You got through in 20 hours? Oh my god, that's so fast. Oh wow. That sounds so much better. Yeah, well, back in 2013, it was like a week. It was a week just to wait for anything. Anything. Like, you wanna you wanna like get a reply from them on email? It was an entire week to wait. You wanna go submit your thing for approval? It takes an entire week to wait for them to go and finally review your app. It was like a nightmare. And we were trying to release like by July 4th or something like that. And we didn't end up releasing until October because of that. And it freaking, I think it killed our whole launch. But a lot of other things killed our launch because we didn't do any marketing. That was the worst part. So that's when I learned how to do game marketing on my own. I'm like, you know what? We got to be able to do our own marketing. Okay, I just, I just, let's like check that this work now by looking up the FMOD event by name. In fact, a better way to do this would be not to just grab it like this, but to check for an, um, an it, get an iterator. So we'll go auto event it equals FMOD events dot find name. And then we can check the event it And it equal this what this does basically is it instead of if it doesn't find the fmod event it won't insert a blank event so just in the weird case that your software is going crazy it's not gonna like go and throw you know a bajillion different um, instance or map values into this did oh Azimuth did he carry on with game devs no I yeah. He did for a minute. Yeah, he did his own game in Unity. It was like a zombie game. And um, and then he put... It... Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a relaunch of his zombie game that he made for um, for Xbox. He actually did pretty well back in the, like, the 2008 era or whatever with this zombie game he wrote. And then um, he tried to put it on the App Store. I, don't, I haven't really followed up with him to see how he did with that. But yeah, he carried on with games for a minute and now he's making... He's writing novels. How did they even know you were caching the Game Center ID? Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They must have had some freaking really detailed process for how they checked. I think I think what they could do is they can look at your um they can look at your binary and see what um see what your what calls you're making. And then I don't know how they actually knew that we were saving the, the game center ID. Yeah, thanks, Jalpenos. So if event it equals fmod events dot end, then we don't. This is a failure. Okay, so let's make sure this all works still. Or it works like that. Because you know, yeah, he totally does. He backed my Kickstarter. Yep. Yeah, this is this is like my childhood friend. We grew up together. Um He's basically my one of my best friend in the whole world is his older brother and we we dude we grew up playing Star Wars RPG. I don't know if anybody's played that but Star Wars the the old school like Dungeons and Dragons style um, RPG with the books and the dice and everything. We did a lot of like fun stuff like that. Oh 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 this is supposed to be event it second. Right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I even see his name on uh, Steam every once in a while. All right, cool. So we had previously loaded all the events into a map, and now we've, we're trying to find this event by its name. And yes, it was successful. Cool. And found the event. We got an event pointer. Let's see if it's good. Yeah, that's it. I remember it being this exact value last time. Okay, cool. So now we can create an event instance and it will also cache these into a map so that I can go and set parameter values based on that map. 
So anyways, let's see if this worked. We should just hear this, the bass noise. Yes, good. We've got that pure sine wave playing now. Very cool. Okay. So next step, we're going to go and store the events into a map. So. So we'll need a look, we'll need a, a function to do this. Uh, yeah, I have plenty of VODs on, on when I did procedural dungeons. There's so many of them. Um, what's up, Hakey? Let me see if I can help you find one of them. I think you can probably just search my videos somehow, but um. Ship dungeon, ship dungeon, day driven doors. No, this is like way, it's gonna be way older. Like we're talking like day 70 or 80 or something. Here's where I did gates. No, no, that's, that's not what I'm, that's not what you're asking. Gates are single use keys. That kind of was no, that was just a video of it. Dungeon, th no. Data driven dungeons, no. This is older, older than all this stuff. Oh, that's all right. I think we almost found it here. Yeah, here. This is it, right here. Here we go, man. Okay, so this is about right around where you want to look at the videos. So starting with day 71, I'll post here a link for you. But yeah, day 71, this is right when I was started at all doing the procedurally generated dungeons. So you probably want to watch this video and videos around here like day 72, 73. Just start from day one. Uh, this is a lot. That's a lot to watch. Uh, have there been any discussions on possibly indexing the vods? Um, how so? What What are you What are you looking for? What kind of index? There is There is this. There's um. There's a playlist on YouTube. I think I got a bit.ly for it even. What? Yeah, so this is kind of an index. I'll post this list if this is what you mean. But what, what do you mean exactly, mutinous? What do you want, like a little more description for each one or something or what? I know, 40 days? Wow. I know, it's a lot to watch. It's a lot to watch. A lot of them are at least two hours. Most of them are around two hours, yeah. Some of them are more like an hour, but not as many. Yeah, see, this one's only 40 minutes. <laughs> right? I know. Day in, day out. That would, be, that would take so long. So I'm going to create a function here that creates event instances. Mm. 
You can append slash chat at the end of the stream. You are yeah, yeah. I was going to that. I uh, just can you reverse the order of the playlist? Yeah, I think you can. Oh, clock clock brings up a rad point. I never knew that, but you can actually change your YouTube speed to two x or more, right? <laughs> Only twenty days. Yeah, Van Zandt, can you can you reverse the, the order? I, that's a good question. It's a really good question. I know I can change the order of the playlist, but can you actually do it? Here, let's view this as a returning subscriber. What? No, I want to go back to the playlist. What's what's TIL? Oh, oh, today I learned. Oh, uh oh, oh. Okay, um can you change this? The order? There's a Chrome plugin. All right, there you go. Yeah, there you go. There's a Chrome plugin. Yeah, I think this is if you're the creator, you can change the order. I don't know. But yeah, there's definitely a way you can do it just with a, a plugin. At least. Uh, mutinous. I think if a voluntary capacity, someone could label stages of the VODs. Oh, label the stages? Like, here's about where I was creating the dungeons or whatever. I see what you mean. So you want it kind of more like a um, an outline where it's got the major stages of development and then there's some, you know, broken out into mi more minor stages. And then each video. The, the Wizard 2D platformer, that one? Yeah, that's back in my older days trying to make uh, trying to make a living selling video game. Basically video game starter kits. It worked for a minute. It totally worked. I was making a living. But then it didn't work. Okay, so here we're going to do this kind of code. Basically, we look up the event and then create an event instance and we if we need to and then yeah. More of a service for the benefit of new audiences. Yeah, uh-huh. Link to the wikis. Um, I probably will, yeah, I know I definitely want to do some kind of documentation for all the data of Songbringer, like, you know, the, this, like the foes and the, um, entities and like the world sections and all that. So maybe in that documentation, I'll do some kind of, um, link to the, to the videos. <laughs> Clock. As a KMBC warrior. Uh, no, I don't actually make any money doing this. I don't make any money Twitch streaming or... I don't even have a Patreon. I don't even make... I don't even make YouTube revenue on any of those videos. You notice all the YouTube videos are all ad-free. Or at least they should be. If you're seeing ads while playing my videos, then... Then I'll be pissed off. Let me know. But yeah, I've I've made sure that I don't. I hate ads, man. I hate ads. I'm not doing it for the ads. I'm really my ulterior motive in all this is I just want you to be interested in Songbringer. 
If you're not interested in Songbringer, that's fine. But if you're the kind of person that is interested in Songbringer, then I want to find you. And that's the only reason I'm doing these videos. Well, no, not the only reason. I do want to make it cool for, for people to, to, first of all, to realize that, hey, one dude made this game. You can do something too like that, right? I want to put some belief in people. Like, for all, all you guys, you all got a lot of talent. You got more talent than you probably believe you do. So you can do stuff like this. Ad block. <laughs> yeah. I got ad block too. I got micro block or whatever. Yep, that's exactly that's exactly what I'm doing. My primary purpose is to market the game. But my secondary purpose is to inspire people and also to make these kind of educational. Whoa, you sold out to Facebook. What's up, Hoggy? Okay, so we get the event, and then we're gonna go and try and get the event from the, the event instance. And if we don't find it, we'll create it. Instance. Instances, there we go. It's repeating ads that annoy you, right? Yeah. I know. It's the worst on those one like uh like on what's that one website? Uh CWTV or whatever. They play you the same ads over and over and over. Oh my god. Next stop, world domination. So if the event instance it is fmod instances dot end, then we create the event. So we'll create a, the event instance pointer here, and wait, wait. We'll just do it this way. If it's not equal to end, then the event. Let's just call it instance. Let's make this simpler. The instance is event instance it second. Twitch will make you watch the ad. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. You refresh. And do they play the same ads to you again? Yeah, I know, and they're they're typically like 30 seconds long and you can't skip them. Oh, this should have the most important thing here. If fmod studio equals null pointer return. Return null. <laughs> right? <laughs> they would be so bad. <laughs> Amazon Prime. Yeah. We got that. We got Amazon Prime, but... We also have Netflix. We also have HBO Now. We've got all the things you could possibly en enjoy watching. Oh, yeah. Event. Event create instance into instance. I guess there's no need to check the pointer because we're just going to return it. There we go. Okay, so now that we created the instance, we want to stash it. So, fmod instances name equals instance. And then we just return instance. Bam! There, now we have a nice function that um, grabs the event description from the event descriptions map and also grabs the event instance from the event instances map if it exists 
Otherwise, it creates an instance. Did you not use Amazon Prime to activate Twitch Prime? What's Twitch Prime? Oh my god, I don't know what that is. Help a brother out. What's this mean, Twitch Prime? Sometimes I live in a closet. I'm literally developing in a closet right here. I'm like I'm like in a cave sometimes, just like songbringer, songbringer, songbringer. Start event. Okay, so now we just call this function to get the event. When are we gonna hear something? It takes a minute, man. It takes a minute. I'm coding. Which, and besides, this is so important here. I was kind of open for the sentence description. Free in game loot every month, ad free viewing. There we go. Ad free viewing. Cool. I didn't know that. That's sweet. I'll get that all hooked up later. Okay, so now that we had a, a we've started the event, or now we now we can go use this function to start the to get the event instance. Fmod get what? Oh, it's just fmod. Get event instance for name. And if that's null pointer, we return. We've already done the assertion failures. Okay, now we've got the event instance, we can just start it. And we don't really want to release it, we want to keep each event. So we're gonna use, now that we've got all that background work done, we can use, easily start events, set parameter values for events, and get parameter values for events. That was what I did all that for. And uh, one second, Van Zan, we're almost to the point where I can play this, play this thing, and set the parameter value based on the player moving to a different room. We're going to want to do this in uh, release. Where is this at? Or end sound engine. Okay, let's make sure this all works. First of all. So if this all works, we should hear just that that one that um, that bass note again. The boo. Oh, all right, all right. Sorry, sometimes I take things literally because I'm a programmer. Um, all right, let's step into this method. Get event instance. We're grabbing it. Looks good. We got the instance pointer. Looking for it, shouldn't find it. Good. We're creating the event. It worked. We have an instance pointer. Good. We're stashing it. Returning the instance. We can use it here. Start the instance. Yes, it worked. And good, we have the sign base note. Yes, yes, programmer, literal. You'll notice when I get in my, my art mode, I'm like making art in, in like Photoshop or I'm making music in Ableton. I get a lot more, I get a lot more jokey. So it's like you switch your brain mode into programmer mode and I get, personally, I get way more literal. Perfect, ship it. It doesn't do anything different, but ship it anyway. So here, this is like basically we can copy this event, this um, function. It's almost the same thing. 
for setting a parameter value. So we got the event instance, if it's null, it's return. Otherwise, we call instance set parameter value. The culmination of all this. Oh, shazzle. I forgot to pass in the event name to this function. Now we got it. This is going to take a second to recompile now. Lord of mercy. What am I going to do? So we got to go. We need an event name and a parameter name. Parameter name, event name. And then also set parameter values, the same thing. All right, recompile. It's hard to do. Yeah, I know it is, right? Yeah, you can. You can go, whoop. I didn't know that either. Mars of Power showed me that. Mars of Power is a old stream watcher. He's, he's still out there. I don't know what he's doing these days or what he's doing this year. He went to Japan. I know last time I talked to Mars of Power, he was going to Japan and stuff. But I heard from um, his friend the other day. They're around. I love those Italian guys. They're so awesome. Alex Pita. Alex Pita has been translating the game into Italian. <laughs> right? Yeah, you know. You're like, da, 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 let me with. yeah, you get an error and you get the little red dot and you create an accidental breakpoint. Been there, done that. So param parameter name. That's Easter. Set this to float value. This is gonna now be event name. This is gonna be error set parameter value I probably should have done all this little code off stream because it's all just really basic stuff I know but you but Xcode extensions you they can't work with the with the app they can only change your source code it's bullshit Xcode extensions are like Stupid. Unless your plugin does that. Just works with your, your code. But yeah, a plugin for managing your breakpoints, never gonna happen. A plugin for or I mean a, an extension for an extension for changing the quick open and fixing it for God's sake, never gonna happen. You can't do it. They don't allow it. A tool to deploy an IP to a device via command line. That would be so sweet. That would be so sweet. Okay, and then our last function is get parameter value. I'm not even going to really need to use this, but I'm just going to do it anyway. So this will be get parameter. we we'll return zero if we can't find it. Otherwise, we get the instance. float value actually we can start this whole function like this and just return value each time if we fail this is just get parameter value oh it doesn't work Whoops. Okay. There we go. We got all these functions set up. Set parameter value, get parameter value, blah, blah, blah. So now when I go and create a new area, 
Uh, we are gonna like set the ambience file name. It changes the ambient. Whoa, that's actually where I wanted to be. Yeah, so it's setting the ambience file name. It's got an index value. And we're gonna just set the set it up to use it. So kit set parameter value. This technically this this function name should be set sound parameter value. Okay, our event name. I'm just gonna hack this in, kind of. Here's our event name. Obviously there's going to be a better way to do this, which is going to be data driven, but then parameter name. Oh, what's our parameter name? Index. I think it might be capital, capital I. Hopefully that's just how it works. It's just index like that. So then set parameter, that's going to be I. Okay. I'm hoping that works. No whammies. Good. Okay, so we've already got um, fmod set up, so it's index at index zero. It um, it's got the beep boop bop boop sounds all the way down. At index one, they're at half volume, and at index two, they're at full volume. So let's see if this works. I do want to set a breakpoint to make sure that it's actually calling this set parameter value and succeeding. Oh, all right. All right, we're getting the instance. See if it says this parameter value. Yeah, it worked. Nice. Okay, good. We've got the bass tone still playing, and if I move into the next room, we should increase the index value, and it should, it should, Fmod should just change the audio. Yes! Yes, it worked. Okay, so that should be the, um, this should be index one. Which means if we go into the next room, it should get, the beep boop bop boop should get a little louder. Yeah, clearly they got louder. So dope! Oh, I love FMOD. Okay, let's prove all that. I want to set up my, um, I got this little thing called ambience verbosity. It should show what's going on with the ambience indexes. Yeah, okay, so now we're gonna, now we've got everything set up, I can start getting into the actual procedurally generated melody part, which I'm hoping oh, this is possible. So there, it just showed that we we're at index zero. Going to the next room, we're at index one. We go back to here, it should be, Oh, see, that's something I need to change. So the way the music system works, it doesn't update if you're already at the same one. Nice, okay, index two, where it's like definitely double volume. Yeah, all right, this is a good start. I'm gonna check this in so far. Got all, all the events loaded, all the events stored into a map. We got all the event instances in maps or in the map. And then we got start event using that set parameter value and get parameter value. Good. Okay, now let's get to this procedural part. So, okay, what, I was, what I'm imagining is that, um, basically I'm gonna go into Ableton and I'm gonna export every single one of these notes as a different file. These individual notes.
Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this track. I'm going to get it so I just have one note. It's going to be at a loud volume. It's 100 velocity. This is a C3. It's just like that. Let's render that. Okay, so this is um, waves test. Call this test note C. Let's make sure that that didn't clip. Sometimes when I export able things from Ableton and they're really, really short, it can kind of clip at the end. Let's make sure it's not doing that. So waves, test note C. It did sound like it clipped at the end. Probably because it hasn't released its tail completely. So let's do a little longer. Test note C. Overwrite that. That sounded a lot better. Oh, it was random though. <laughs> so we still got this random effect on here. We need to delete that. So this track here, we're just exporting the note pure without it changing the, uh, the actual note value randomly. That sounds pretty good. I, well, could get, I should get audition open so we can 